Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Owning Her Health. I am your guest, Dr. Lisette Alvarez-Holland, and I am welcoming uh, the goddess of, how, how could we call this, your guided health journeys working within the body. Melissa, uh, Melissa Daly is working on, uh, she's got some programs with basically detoxing your life and and uh she's building some thriving community things she's got some work with girls we just talked a couple minutes before this podcast and she had been talking the whole blue light thing for to talk on other podcasts so listen in and buckle up and let's get started with the show Welcome to this episode of Owning Her Health with your host, Dr. Lisa. Join Lisa as she starts the conversation on what it really takes to become a healthy, wealthy, and whole CEO of your life. Listen in to real talk by real lady leaders in all walks of life as they open up on personal health stories, wealth, career, and feminine abundant living. Learn how to grow by owning your body, expanding your mind, and aligning your soul with the purpose only you can pursue in this world. Happiness begins with owning her health right now. And so we connected um, via a naturopath uh, on LinkedIn. So that's um, everybody listening to this is why I tell you, you know, g- get on, have conversations because you never know, you know, I probably wouldn't have met Melissa without a little call out and said, you know, I'm looking for people who are talking like this. So it, it matters. And I always feel like I personally feel like I get connected with the people I'm, I'm supposed to know. So I, I welcome you, Melissa. Thank you so much for being on Owning Her Health today. Uh, what would you like to say is, you know, who are you and what are you doing in the world right now to bring Melissa, the woman who's on this pioneer journey and had her own story uh, working with her own health and, and what she's seen? How, 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 how are you bringing yourself to the world nowadays? Well, thank you so much for having me. I love all that you've just shared there. And I'm bringing myself to the world nowadays, calling myself a toxin slayer. Mm, Love that. And it's really resonating with people. It's kind of fun. It's intriguing. And uh, it's what is so needed in today's world. And many people don't realize this, but with 144,000 man-made chemicals introduced since World War II, our poor livers and kidneys are getting bogged down and unable to do the job that they're supposed to do. And not only that, we have uh, nutrient deplete soil systems these days. And so they're also not getting the nutrients needed to help get those toxins out of our body. And as a result, our bodies are laden with toxins. They get stored in our fat closets because our liver is really smart. It doesn't want them to get into our, into the bloodstream. So it protects it from our bloodstream and stores it in our fat closets. Where are our fat closets? Well, our brain is largely fat and water. I don't know about you, but I don't want a whole lot of toxins running around in my brain. In women in particular, breasts, we've got a lot of fatty tissue in our breasts. And then of course, if we're overweight, we've got fat closets in our body and it gets really toxic. And that causes inflammation in the body. And then that inflammation can then trigger our cells to turn on diseases that we're genetically predisposed to. This is the science of epigenetics. And I've got really great news for people here. Your genes are not the sole dictator of your health outcomes. In fact, they're just a very small percentage of that, 5 to 10%. The other 90 to 95% is the lifestyle that you live and the environment you create inside your body. And that's really empowering because it means you have control. You get to choose what you put inside your body, what you put on your body, what you're exposing your body to. And in making better choices and understanding that you have that much control, you can choose to create a body that is inhospitable to disease. Mm -hmm. And that's what I teach people to do. I help them get those toxins out and show them how to create a body that's inhospitable to disease while still loving their life, eating great food and, you know, living fully. And that's just what's not taught today, unfortunately, through school or through our public health system. Yeah. And so you have to look elsewhere for it. And it was something that I didn't know 10 years ago when I was in the corporate world. 
But when I got ousted from the corporate world, I was guided into health and wellness through uh, my daughter's health. They both had concussions at a very similar time, and I was helping them with their recovery. And that process taught me so much and also taught me there was gaps in the market and people need more support in their healing journey. And it was something that I was very interested in. So I went back to school and I went became a health coach. And as I'm at school learning to be a health coach, I'm going, why don't I know all of this about my own body? I'm in my 40s and I've never been taught this. And I realized, well, because I've been busy, you know, getting other degrees and building my career and being a mom and being a wife. And so then I realized how many other people don't know this as well. And here's an opportunity to pay it forward and educate people that want to take control of their health, that want to optimize it, that want to live to the very end, you know, and not spend 10 years in a nursing home, which is what the average North American is doing right now. And once you're in a nursing home, that's not quality of life. That's just waiting to die. And then just this week, I did some research at the cost per year of being in a nursing home. Hundred what is it? Thousand dollars. Hundred and eight or eighty? Eight right eight. now. Hundred and eight thousand in twenty twenty two. That's just basically room and board and meals, right? Mm-hmm. That's not any extra yeah. medical care. It's, that's it's your extra you six it. figures of your education that you start out right as this young person now going to college and then at the end of your life you're going to pay another and like in the middle you're just going to make yourself miserable if you don't own your health exactly (laughs) and by 2030 which is only eight years away it's going to be at 140,000. so that's how much it's escalating in a short amount of time and that's probably you know, we're probably not really bringing in all the ramifications from the post, the long COVID syndrome. And that was just stuff we're kind of basing on what was going on before the, exactly. the pandemic. Totally. <laughs> it was. Right, right. So we're going to have a lot more, was. you know, these chronic types of, you know, lack of tolerance that just cannot play the game the way we ha- we couldn't play it before, but we seem to be okay with you know, cancer rising every year and kids cancer. I mean, I, I just, I don't even remember it. I'm, I'm 50 years old. I don't remember all these kids having cancer in right. my town. I mean, they didn't right. hide them. They just didn't have it, you know? Right, like, exactly. <laughs> you so know? We need to be asking why. Right. Why is all of this happening, right? And we have all this chronic illness out there in the world today of which, you know, can't some cancers fall into that chronic illness category as do type 2 diabetes, heart disease, obesity, leaky gut, autoimmune diseases, Alzheimer's dementia is even is also a chronic illness, right? A lifestyle disease. And I truly believe we wouldn't have all of those lifestyle diseases if I could show the world how to help our body remove the toxins and stop storing them inside. Right. Because if you look at Ayurvedic medicine in India or Latin American cultures or Asian cultures and traditional Chinese medicine, they all still detox to this day. It makes sense. It's just, and it, and it could be as simple as I know working with pelvic health, it was, you know, there's the question, are you constipated? And everybody said no. But then if you, you have to ask the next question, which no office is really do unless you're into pelvic health and you understand this or functional medicine and you just say well are you telling me that you're you know that you poop what you know twice a day and it looks like a a a a banana you know if i were to squeeze out a banana and it's nice oh no oh no (laughs) well then you're constipated but then you know their doctor doesn't say they're constipated I, i see this all the time in pediatrics which breaks my heart of you know you're almost sitting there um you know, they're telling you, uh, get the calories on the kids, you know, give them a bunch of dairy. Give, and then the kid is also not pooping well. So put them on the mirror lax. And it's just, it's so backwards. And, 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 and I just, I shudder to think what's going to be going on in the future, because between us giving these nutrition bars and the kid not really eating and like the kids have it right. The kids are so picky and having issues eating now because they don't want to eat the chemical. <laughs> but exactly. like, you know what I mean? Like they know it innately, like babies, right. know, especially if you've been breastfeeding or whatever, like it, it, all of this. So I really, I really commend, you know, you, there's just a couple of things, wonderful goddess things. Um, 
that I, I hear in that story, it's like ousted from corporate. Like this is the hero's journey, guys. This is like, you know, like you think it's bad for you, but then you look back and you look back and you're like, oh my God, that was the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> you know, this is a typical thing that one of these evolutionary women will be feeling. So if this is happening to you right now, like listen to Melissa's story, you know, you know my story, even especially after the past couple of years, like this is just what happens when you're called. Sometimes you're not on the right track and you just get repositioned and and it and it's crazy. Um, sometimes it's your disease. Sometimes it's like you said, you, you know, you had this opportunity to work with your daughters, but the, the lights will get turned on. And then, then you went and you went into your second life of, I'm going to go do health coaching. And you were in your forties and you were, you know, courageously doing that. And I think a lot of, um, people, especially women, sometimes they're like, oh, I'm going to compromise or I left my whatever career. And, and they don't even think like, how could I like go back or, or pivot? Or if they pivot, maybe they don't have like that why fire in them and you do something on the side, but it never really like, and I'm not saying you have to be a big boss lady. I'm just saying like something to, you went in and you did something for yourself and, and it's sort of guiding you. And again, that's another typical thing that sort of, I feel is like a grace that sometimes we miss and, 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 you know, we have to open our eyes to. And then the third thing was, uh, something that you brought up that I want to kind of dive into a little bit more is, you know, especially as women, we're so like the weight loss, the weight loss, the weight loss. And we go on these things for like to get rid of all of our fat, but we may not be understanding that we've been collecting so many toxins in there that we are creating we need some guidance, not just to like drop this, because where do you think it goes? It, it floods our system. So what can you speak to that in case somebody's just sort of a little confused? Because I think it gets confusing with the doctor being like, go on a diet, get lower your fat, and then you're going and exercising. But maybe you've been so toxic because you've been in corporate culture a while. You've been in a stressed out relationship. You've been running around or whatever. What can we kind of just say and, and talk about like, so, kind of the precursors to that because that that can really hurt you yeah yeah because we've you know we as you said we flood our system with these toxins so a few things there um i work with the physical the mental and the emotional bodies right and by the time symptoms are showing up in the physical they've already moved through the mental and the emotional bodies right. so in terms of removing toxins we want to address removing them in all of the bodies and there's different techniques to be doing that and so you know people definitely want to be working with a practitioner that's trained in specific techniques the one that the ones i'm trained in is hypnotherapy and timeline therapy to help right. release those toxic emotions release the toxic thoughts and attitudes that could have been totally programmed in, in, you know, the corporate world. And they certainly were for me. And that was something that I had to do and go through for myself. And then with the physical, um, I guide people through detox programs and it's a functional medicine detox program. And the reason that I guide people through is that it is a powerful program. It's not just a store-bought program that you buy off the shelf and you do it yourself, or you just drink some tea, right? That's not actually going to release all of the toxins. But when we do it through this program, it's done in a very safe way because you're guided through and we're using supplements that actually help open up the pathways, support the liver and kidneys in converting those toxins to being water soluble. So the body can actually release them through our urine, our breath, our skin and our bowels. And having those pathways open is absolutely critical. So using supplementation to do that and a guided program is truly the best way versus store-bought. Right. And but holistic, like, it, like you said, like exactly. it's gonna, you could, you could use the breath, you could use the skin and sweat and things like that. But like exactly. so many people <laughs> are doing it like just one way, the wrong way usually. <laughs> Right. And, <laughs> and, and store bought or whatever their friend yeah. did. And then you don't right? feel well. Like at first you exactly. just don't feel well and you might give up, give up or do other things to supplement that and not understand it. So anybody kind of listening to this, it's a process. It's a process. And, and that's kind of why, you know, in owning your health, it's, 
it's not just what you're doing, it's who you're being. So I love, Melissa, that you that you kind of look at that because I'm all about that. I have five realms of wellness, of five, five realms of being in my system that I always worked with people. And I still use that even when I'm pivoting them to create their own brand and this and that. It's still the same thing in terms of like trimming the fat, you know, like getting out the toxins. Who, who, yeah. who do you be? It's all the same thing. Um, and... Tell me a little bit about, you know, so so you know all of this. And I know sometimes what we get challenged by, especially as mothers, it's like, oh, my God, you almost feel like guilty you didn't know it sooner or you <laughs> couldn't have applied it or like why, did you, like you said, like, why didn't I know this? Well, we know why, because allopathic medicine, as wonderful as it is when you're on death's door or you are horribly diseased, it really doesn't know what to do to not make you in that position. Um, or let me say it this way. It knows exactly what to do to help, but, but nobody's really trained to do that. So they're not going to work out of their, you know, realm to do that. Um, how did you deal with that? Like, like, what do you wish you had known 10 years ago when you look back 10 years or so, or even 20 years, you know, whenever you, before you, you you know, when you were there working and doing all the things you were taught to do, right. We did all the things we were supposed to be doing. And we weren't doing it wrong. We were doing it right. But what do you wish you could say now to that woman or any woman who's still sort of living in that illusion? Well, there's a few things. And this was one of the first ahas I had when I you know, got into health coaching school. And that is that self-care is the most selfless Mm, do you hear that selfless, not selfish? Exactly. So I made a little mantra around that which is self-care is the most selfless act because it allows you to show up and give the world the best of you instead of what's left of you. Mm, Now, I wish I had known that when my children were little and when I was in that corporate world, because really what I was taught in that corporate world is that you need to work more, more, more. So you're paid 40 hours, but really we're going to expect that you do 50 to 60 hours every week. We're just going to pile that much work on you and you need to get it done, right? And so that's high stress. And then I'm juggling being a wife, being a mom, trying to get it all done, right? And so I was of the mindset too, that I had to look after everybody else first. And then only if there was time, could I look after me? Otherwise I was being selfish and there was never time. And when I flipped it on its head, what a shift that made by then my kids, by that time, my kids were teenagers, but I started actually putting my self-care time into my calendar and putting not only the time in, but what I was going to do during that time. Mm -hmm. Because if I didn't say what I was going to do during that time, yeah, it's super easy to be like, oh, look, I've got half an hour and just, oh, let's see what's happening in Facebook. And then the half an hour is gone, right? As opposed to I'm going to go do a yoga class or I'm going to go for a walk or I'm going to, right? And then I'm going to go do that. And what I really noticed after about probably three, four months of that, of every day having my time booked first, that when my kids were pushing my buttons and teenagers will push our buttons, right? Mm -hmm. When they were pushing my buttons, I wasn't reacting the same way, you know, with yelling or anger or just, you know, outburst. Instead, I was coming from a place where I could get curious and just say, so why, why is that? Or what does that mean to you? Or, you know, and just flip it back on them. And I realized, wow, I'm not reacting anymore. I'm responding. And I'm choosing who I want to be when I respond because I had the space to be able to do that for myself. So that was one thing that I wish I'd known earlier. Another thing that I wish I'd known earlier was uh, the impact of phones. And we did talk about this phones on our sleep because if I'd known that earlier, I would have been able to not allow habits of my kids of having their phones in their room. By the time they're teenagers, they don't want to listen to mom anymore. But when they're younger and they're more receptive to your guidance and you can talk to them, et cetera, et cetera, I could have maybe kept their phones out of their room. And that's so important because there is EMF radiation from this. And let's face it, we've got 5G happening everywhere. In fact, my phone's 3G and I'm traveling to the U.S. next week and I tried to buy a phone plan so that I could use it in the U.S. And my phone plan is like, well, 3G doesn't work very many places in the U.S. anymore because they're taking down all the towers. Yeah. 
right? It's hard now. I'm, I'm trying to, they want me, of course, to go up to the 5G. I'm like, I'm doing fine with the 4G. <laughs> I don't need to be, and it's, I'm, I'm seeing issues with my phone. I'm seeing, but I'm just trying to be patient. Because <laughs> yeah. one giant human experiment and there is radiation and this is impacting our health. And so just teaching kids that and keeping phones out of rooms or protecting them, like my phone doesn't come in my room at night, but I have it protected with a case that blocks the EMF. I do have my iPad in my room. I have it on airplane mode. I have it in a case that blocks the EMF, but I, I have it there because I use it for meditating. Sometimes I will read on my iPad, et cetera, right? But I that's the only device. Um, so just understanding that and have being able to talk to my children about that when they were younger and more receptive and now they're adults, right? So they do their own thing and they make their own decisions and they're still at that young adult stage where mom doesn't really know anything. Yeah. And well, it, that's the thing, know, right? They, I mean, I have, I have a 19 and 23 year old and just that's, I think that's one of the hardest parts of parenting. Right. And I feel like this attachment, you know, you, 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 you were like eating different, you were birthing this babies, you know, and even if you just had got them as a baby or, you know, it, 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 it just feels different. It feels different, you know? Um, and, and that's the whole thing. Like from the moment they're cut from you umbilical cord, it's all about letting go. Yeah. It's all about letting go. And it's so yeah. hard, but it, it's such a personal evolution yeah. um, through that process. And then if you can combine the right? The wisdom that you're gaining, which always seems to come back for women to mm -hmm. nature, nurture, social s issues, right? Like it, you want, you want a better place for your grandchildren. And, and, and research shows that when women get money through their businesses, they'll pump it back into their families, into their own education, into their, so they could be better for the society and things like that at the rate of 70% versus 30% of men. So it, right. it is so important that we're taking care of ourselves, owning our health while, like you said, you're doing the whole corporate thing and you want to be the boss of this and you want to be the leader of this. It doesn't matter if you're sick and everybody underneath you and everybody around you is either going to have to care for you or, you know, witness that and, and, and you're going to feel that way. So thank you for, for sharing that. I'm going to flip that. So let's just say, you know, Melissa's work and guiding people's health journeys is a smash and you're all over the place and you're talking on a bunch of stages and we're 10 years down the line and you were able to impact in your vision. Give us a little vision version of that vision that that woman is telling you in your ear it happened it, it's a it, you did a great job what is she telling you right now to keep going in she's telling me to uh stick the course because i'm on the path and that path is to to yes through my podcast don't wait for your wake-up call through my work to create a thriving global community and it's more than just health because we need to bring the whole world up together, right? All boats rise together. And so something that I've already started working on and am working to expand and hopefully explode is keeping girls in school in third world countries. So I've created a nonprofit called Girls Matter. And the reason that this is um, so important to me is that I took my girl guides. I'm a girl guide leader. You call them Girl Scouts. I have been since my now 24-year-old was five. Mm -hmm. I took them to see a movie or a documentary called Girls Rising about 10 years ago. And it was a documentary about girls in countries all around the world that are denied education simply because they are a girl. And their desperate desire and what they had to do to get an education. And I watched this with all these kids in a first world country, and my kids included, with tears coming out of my eyes because I knew I had taken my education for granted. I knew every kid in this room had, every single one of us has said, do I have to go to school today? That's come out of our mouths, right? Meanwhile, we have these other kids that are being denied, desperate to go to school. And it just felt so wrong. And then I learned a statistic that if in India, if they educated just 1% more girls, they could, they could grow the GDP by $5.5 .5 billion. And to me, there lies the answer. It isn't easy, but it's simple. Educate the girls, change the GDP, bring these countries out of poverty. 
Yeah, it seems so simple. And then we just have the complication of what's the problem, this underlying fear, this, you know, I mean, I see it in America where, and I get it. It's just, you have all of these women in all of these positions and working out of the homes and some of them, you know, not wanting to really be in a traditional type of role, but I can see where, what have we been teaching the men in terms of, you know, I always do bring that up. Like, I'm not saying they don't have to step up because at this point it's like, you guys are behind, like start watching us. Okay. Just like copy us. Okay. Be okay with that. Um, but on the other hand, there really is no, and, and I've tried even with my son who's 19, you know, it's still, they want to be a man and what is a being a man? And, and I can see where that perpetuates, you know, well, the easier thing to do, if I don't know how to be a man, let's just make sure a woman stays in her place of where she's been. So it's easier for me. You know, I, I get the whole thing, but it's so, it is, like you said, it's, it's kissing it, keep it simple and sane. And if, and if they could just whoever is against any of these things happening or not supporting it can just trust in that that balance it's just nature it's just it, it, it's just got to get better it just look ju everybody's come from a womb yeah everybody whether you ended up on a street after that or whatever like there's a connection there let's trust that has been made by nature <laughs> and facilitate that wisdom and things so I, I love 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 that um so melissa as we close up you know tell us a little bit how can we find you what's the best places for us to find you most directly and i will put those on the show notes on the lipson podcast main uh blog um where, where can we find you and then also uh you know what what's like one one takeaway you want to really make sure that my audience you know leaves with from you sure so in terms of finding me my website is yourguidedhealthjourney.com you could simply email me at melissa at yourguidedhealthjourney.com or there is a contact form right on my website. And the other thing is for Girls Matter, it's just girlsmatter.ca. So if, okay. if that little chat around keeping girls in school so that we're not having them married off and repeating the, you know, as teenagers and repeating the poverty cycles of their mother, but supporting keeping them in school and then on to university. If that's something that you want to get behind and support, you can check out our website. We have a donation page there. And again, you can also email me at melissa at yourguidedhealthjourney.com about that too. And then as to the takeaway, I just really want to invite everyone to just have a little mindset shift around the importance of your health. And think of it as your greatest asset. And let's just talk about your other two greatest assets very quickly, your car and your house. You fill your car up with gas and you put the right kind of gas in your car to make it run. You don't take a bottle of Coke and put that in your car and expect it to run. The, and the service light comes on and you take your car in and you get it serviced and you pay for the service so that your car runs. Your house, you vacuum it, you take out the garbage, you clean it, you fix things that are broken, you renovate it when needed. What if you started treating your body the same way? Think of symptoms as the engine light. Instead of ignoring them or just the aches and pains, oh, I'm getting older, think of them as, a little, as an engine light. Why do I have this symptom? What's going on? And who do I need to seek help from in order to address it? Because the earlier we address symptoms, the earlier we can bring the body back into balance so that we can then have those symptoms go away. And it, and it is, guys. You guys treat and upgrade your iPhones so much more than you. You know, this this is the greatest, uh, you know, I had heard it first from Sadhguru. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that uh, mystic that, that does a lot of public service stuff and things like that around the world. But he just said, he's like, this is the best technology. You keep standing on lines for days for the new upgrade, right? This is the best the body is the best iPhone technology that's better than anything they've ever made. And we just don't know it. 
I mean, that's really what this conversation is showing, right? Like the, the, we, we hear about gut health, we hear about toxins, we hear, but like how sad is it that we're driving a car or we're living in a house where there's some rooms we've never gone in, <laughs> where there's, you just never looked under the hood. And I used to say that all the time to the women I would work with. If I was the first one putting a mirror down to their pelvic floor to just show them what I'm talking about, and they were like 50 years old, I was like, so you have five kids, and you had two husbands and boyfriends and all of this other stuff, and, and, and I'm the first one showing you what everybody else saw. You know, like it, 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 we've got to stop doing this, right? So thank you so much because it, just the littlest thing, guys, whoever's hearing this, and especially if you're on this wild, wild journey of sort of, you know, you're not, you're owning your health, but you're whole, owning your wealth, you're owning your well being, you're owning your life. Uh, it's going to take a village not just for kids, for adults, it takes a village. <laughs> um, we've got to really heal that. Uh, and when I say heal, I mean evolve, evolve the conversations like we're having here. And if you need, you know, if you're really interested in, in some of this this information, please do go on over to Melissa's uh, website and st yourguidedhealthjourney.com. Make sure if you're interested in any of the women's stuff, you take take me up on my offer here as I as I connect you with these wonderful people that are doing wonderful things and, 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 and motivate yourself, find out in yourself. Cause once you do that, right, Melissa, once you start getting yourself healthy, you're going to open your eyes to so many, there, there's so much more in life. 100%. Right? 100%. So much more, and you have so more, more energy, energy, more. energy so mm -hmm. you can do more. Right. So I'll also offer a gift to your audience, okay. which is your, my discover your toxic load quiz. Mm, and so okay. people can just go in and do this quiz. And it's just asking about symptoms that they've quite likely just been ignoring and not paying attention to. And then you answer the quiz, you get a score as to what your toxic load is. I and then it. you have that awareness. This is where I'm at. Now, what do I get to do? About All right. It? So I will put that direct link also in the show notes. We will get that to you. Thank you so much, Melissa. Thank you everyone for listening. And we'll see you next time on Owning Her Health. Take care. Thank you for listening into this episode of Owning Her Health with Dr. Lisa Holland. To learn more about her personal and professional development service, visit her online at drlisahollandpt.com.